An anticipation guide is a pre-reading strategy that can be used across grade levels and across content areas. Anticipation guides pique students' interest in what they're about to read and also sets up a purpose for their reading. It can be used with an individual child, in small groups, or by the whole class. They work by asking the students to respond to specific statements that the teacher's chosen ahead of time. Teachers design statements to activate students' prior knowledge and have the students make predictions about what they're going to read. We're about to watch Kathy Doyle use an anticipation guide with her second graders with an Eve Bunting book called Jin Wu. Good morning. I want to share a story with you today called Jin Wu. And I think you're going to love this story. And I'm also going to share a strategy with you called the anticipation guide. To anticipate something is you're waiting for something and you don't know what's going to happen yet. And what's great about this strategy, what I'm about to let you try, is I think it will get you super excited to hear this story. So we're going to jump in. First sentence in the box says, look at the front, look at the picture on the front cover. The boy in this story is very happy about this newborn baby. So if I were filling this out, I would look at the picture on the front cover and decide, hmm, do I think that's true or not true? Do I agree with that? Let me read it again. The boy in this story is very happy about this newborn baby. Well, I'm looking at some of the clues that I see. He's smiling. He looks calm. His shoulders are down. The baby's looking at him. I'm going to check, yes, I agree. So remember when you're filling out the anticipation guide, there's not a right or wrong answer. What matters is that you think about what you know and you check whether you agree or whether you disagree. I'm going to read the next one and I'm going to ask you to agree or disagree and you're going to put the check on your own. When a story is about a new baby coming home to his family, the setting will be an airport. So we definitely need to know what setting is. Does anyone know what setting is? Deja? It's where something took place at. Where, where the story takes place. So let's read it again. When a story is about a new baby coming home to his family, the setting will be an airport. So if you agree, check yes, I agree. And if you disagree, say no, I disagree. Take the time to read each of the statements on the anticipation guide and ask students if they agree or disagree. It's also important to give them opportunities for discussion. Go to the one that says tiny babies can send messages to their older brothers or sisters. How about Isaac? Um, I thought about that one because um, babies can communicate to, your, to their brothers or their big brother or sister um, by crying because when they cry it they like send like I want that thing. So did you hit, did you mark yes I agree or no I disagree? I put yes. Because you think that's a great point because you're thinking about the messages that are being sent are really happening from babies through crying, right? So now is the best part. We are going to get a chance to jump into this book and I want you to leave that anticipation guide at your table and I want to gather you near and I'd like you to come closer to me on the floor so you can enjoy this story. After walking through the anticipation guide with the students, it's time to read the story. The book can be read independently, but Kathy chooses to read it to the whole class. The story is called Jin Wu, and it's by Eve Bunting. It's illustrated by Chris Soint Peet. If reading the book to the whole class, read slowly and stop at points in the text that relate to the it's statements the from the anticipation guide. They're already dressed. I put on my clothes as slowly as I can. Hurry, sweetheart, Mom calls. Do you need help? No, I mutter. I'm going to ask you a question. You can look at the picture for clues. Where are they? Deja? They're at the airport because like on the guide they said when they're at the airport they were waiting for the baby. So the anticipation mm -hmm. guide said when a story is about a new baby coming home to his family, the setting will be an airport. Is the setting always an airport? No. No. Why not? Maya? Because usually when people are getting a baby it, it comes out of their tummy. And, and the setting might be what in, in that case? In the hospital. In the hospital. 
Okay, so not always, but sometimes. Let's keep reading. I don't think that's the right one, I say. Hoping. Maybe they'll send him back. An anticipation yeah, guide is mainly a pre-reading strategy. Here, you'll see Kathy well. incorporate they other reading so strategies, like turn and talk, that, that she has her students use when they're sharing a book. My stomach hurts. How do you think the boy's feeling about the baby, Deja? Um, uh, I'm not happy about this, and I do not want a baby in this house. Why do you think? Because how he was talking and how he was thinking. I'm going to ask you in a minute to turn and talk to someone, but I have a question for you, and I want you to think about it first. Is this boy ever going to change his mind about this baby? Think about it first. Put your thumb up when you, when you feel like you have an answer. Okay. And why do you think that? Okay, I want you to turn and talk to somebody else about this. Incorporating discussion into the reading engages students and encourages independent thinking. He's gonna change his mind when at the end or in the middle. Yeah, the, the, the top of the picture of, well, the book cover has a picture of the little boy smiling, holding the baby, and that kind of makes me feel like He's going to start to like it once he gets used Give to Give students the chance to share their ideas with the whole class. Does anyone want to share what they talked about with their partner and share some of your thinking? Maya? Me and um, Virginia agreed that um, he would change his mind because we saw on the front cover that um, he's he's holding the baby and he's smiling and that's why we think in the middle or in the end he's going to change his mind. So you're using picture clues to help your thinking along, right? Yes. You're, you're using some of the clues. Once the story is over, review the statements on the anticipation guide with the class and discuss any important themes. So remember that we started with this anticipation guide and we had some idea about what the story was going to be about but there definitely were some things that changed along the way, didn't they, with our thinking? Yeah. And that happens with stories, especially when we have the ideas of our friends with us, right, along the way, when we talk about what books with our friends. Kanaja? I wanted to tell you that he, got, he really did get really into the baby he and like did. liking the baby. He did, he came around and he changed, yeah. and characters often because do change like, in stories. When using an anticipation guide, I'd encourage teachers to think very carefully about the statements that they put on. You want to choose ones that will give the students and you something to talk about as you're working your way through your book. Anticipation guides are a great strategy. Use them before you read, but I think you'll find yourself referring back to them during your reading and after your reading too. Did anyone else want to talk about that one? 